So in Wraithbinder, you'll be able to have um, a whole bunch of different kinds of armor, like uh, different helmets, um, cloaks, capes, different boots, uh, gauntlets, and also different weapons. Right now, this guy's got a sword and a cape and some kind of helmet, but no breastplate. This guy's totally bare chested. And I've got it set to just randomly try different um, things. I've been building all these uh, models of stuff like, uh, like that you can add to your character. Like, here's one sword. Here's another sort of sword. There's like a katana. There's a tiny short sword. Um, here, let's take out, check out some axes. There's axes too. Here's an axe. There's a double bladed axe. Um, here's like one of the belts you can wear, for example. Uh, here's some breastplate armor. Um, here's one of the capes. There's a cape. Long cape. Shorter cape. More narrow cape. Um, this one is the like a stringy cape. So anyways, uh, and then all sorts of eyes and hair too. So there's some regular eyes. There's some dotted eyes. There's some really tall eyes. Some looking up eyes, sort of. Um... And so all these, right now I've just got them set to be random. Like at runtime, it just randomly chooses, arranges a whole bunch of different uh, sections of your model, of your character, and um, basically gives you this sort of look. Oh yeah, armor, shoulder armor is kind of cool. This guy's got shoulder armor. And a breastplate, and an axe, and a helmet. Looks pretty cool. Well, let's try it again. This goes random. This is kind of neat because... Um, It'll really make it fun, I think, to play this game and earn different pieces of armor. And having this all implemented is really cool. In fact, oh, now we've got a spear. I forgot there's spears. He's got a mohawk, those certain eyes, some shoulder armor, and the stringy cape. And you notice that the cape is animated. Um, even though there was only one frame I showed you there in the cape, right? It's just one single frame, but it's animated with code. In fact, what I've done is I've basically kind of rigged up a character. This is uh, almost like rigging a character here in these animations. I did these, I did these manual animations, basically, that just takes, uh, for each section of armor or body or whatever, um, it takes the certain frame uh, that you're working on, this model, and then gives you a translation and a rotation for that head, for example, or cape. Here's look, Let's go look at the cape. Um, for like when you're falling, the cape rotates itself a lot. See that? It's rotated 195 on the x-axis. It's flipping it all the way on the x-axis and the z-axis to get it to look right. So that's how it actually looks animated. And now that I've done this, I've basically I've, I've realized, oh my gosh, I've basically just rigged up a character manually with all, all code. Rather than trying to like take my existing models and put them into Blender and then um, add some rotations and and um, translations there in Blender, which would make it um, some advantages to doing it that in Blender would be that I could uh, interpolate between different animations. So I could give it, um, let's look at like, for example, uh, the sword animation. Here's sword. Let's get a little like nice angle on it here. There's sword animation right all of these frames it could interpolate the model's position between each frame like the arm could move slightly between each frame um, if i were to animate this all and rig it up in blender so that might be really cool but i would have i would i would sacrifice one thing which is kind of nice but i think I'm, i can work around this but anyways let's look at look at what I'm, i'll be sacrificing to do that Right now, I've kind of got a hybrid system. So this t it starts with the base model, which is this guy. So he's got no eyes, no hair, no none of the armor. Doesn't even have a weapon. That that white stuff right there is just uh, some like um, sparkly animation stuff. Like same as this white stuff right here, right? It's just animation. Um, so so basically, the advantage of doing it this way is that because he's got nothing there, um, I can and and all the armor is added on later i can use this base to do some creative stuff like for example this white uh bit of um energy coming around that can be part of that frame and sort of act like a stop motion but also 
more importantly, if I were to use Blender and rig everything up, even like the legs and the torso and everything like that, and rotate it and translate it at, um, based on the, the character's rig, um, I would lose out on the ability to do some special things like this. For example, look at this leg right here. This doesn't look very good. I can go and customize this by adding in some voxels right here, right? So I can have these like sort of manual animations. Um, they're kind of stop motion in the sense that they're every 0.1 seconds, which is like any other pixel art animation. This is just applied to the voxel world. But anyway, see how I just added some, some voxels right there? That's, that's something I couldn't do if I were just simply rotating and translating in Blender. So I've got a hybrid system right now, which is kind of cool. And I'm considering, though, switch, still switching to sort of modeling everything up in Blender because I think it'll lead to some really crisp animations. Like I can animate at 60 frames a second instead of 10 frames a second right now. Um, Songbringer was 10 frames a second. All the pixel art animations were about 10 frames a second. Some of them were about uh, 20 frames a second at times. But this is currently about 10 frames a second in the voxel world too. And it might look really smooth and nice to take it from 10 to 60. I know it will. Um, there'll be a lot more models to cache though. So we've got this guy's whole model. We'd have to cache up 60 times, you know, or six times the anim the models for just this character. So that might be a lot more memory usage, but I think in the end, I can, I can figure out how to get like, so that guy's, um, one way to fix that. If I were to do this in Blender, I could have just basically added those voxels anyways. And then, um, any overlapping voxels, um, would just override each other. And so I could like make his leg a little bit big right there. And then the torso would cover it up most of the time, except when you see it rotated to an extreme angle. So I think in Blender, I can make it work and still make it look good. Uh, but also get this, the really f smooth 60 frames a second animations, which would be f amazing. Interpolation and interpolating between all these, I think ha mechanically how that would work is instead of having, I would have six keyframes in, uh, um, in Blender, and uh, and then in the code, it would take those keyframes and interpolate them all, you know, interpolate between the rotate, rotated uh, angles and the translated positions, interpolate all that stuff, and basically give you instead of six frames, we would have um, not sixty, but yeah, sixty frames. Yeah, sixty frames. Dang, it would go from well, no, six times six. Uh, it's 36. So we go from six frames to a 36 frame animation. Can you imagine having to like manually animate 36 animations for this sword here? That would take forever. But to do it with code could be super fast. Only um, only thing is that memory. So that's where my head's at right now. Where 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 should I go with this? Should I go with um the blender rigging? I think so. It'll make all this animating so much easier. Because another thing I won't have to do with Blender is I won't have to create any of these manual tables right here of rotations and translations, which is kind of a, a today I added a blink animation and I'm like, dang, I'm lazy. I don't want to go back and add the blink to the um, the shoulders to the blink animation and, and the body and all that stuff. Because if you have to rotate and translate and find all these manual positions in the code, like if I were to go where, where are the shoulders at right here, I have to go, hmm. The shoulders are right here, or the, the center of the shoulders are about right here. So that means the X has to be uh, offset is zero. The Y offset is minus three. The Z offset is plus seven. You know what I mean? This is a super long, manual, tedious process. So also another win for switching to Blender, which I'm, I guess I'm, I'm convincing myself right now. I probably need to do this. So anyways, I need to like buff up my skills, look at how to even rig models in Blender. I don't even know how to do that. And then kind of like rig up a model and then import all that data from the Blender model into the game and get rid of this whole system. Basically, it's a lot of work. it take me all week or whatever, but I think it's going to be worth it. So, yeah. And so check it out. With that, with that, I was just talking about the blink animation. I was lazy. So let's look at the blink animation and just like illustrate what I was talking about right there. Let's get the guy with less stuff, maybe a bare chested or something like that. No, wait, no, we don't. We want lots of stuff. Sorry. So let's get, make a guy with lots of arm. Okay, this will work. He's got a helmet. All right, so um, I'm going to slow down time and we'll blink and you'll see that the helmet will instantly disappear, but the cape and the weapon will be there. 
See that? He's got the cape and the weapon, but no helmet. No shoulders either. Because I was just lazy today. It takes forever for me to find all those positions, so... And now that I have this idea about Blender, I'm like, do I need to, do I really need to invest any more time in manually doing these animations? Probably not. So there you have it. Thanks for watching.